Okay, so I just wanted to provide you with a couple more examples of factoring trinomials just um, to make sure everybody's uh, on the same page and if you needed some extra examples. So we are going to factor c squared minus 13c plus 30. So again, we're going to start off with our parentheses. Remember, it doesn't matter whether I'm using the letter x or the letter c or the letter r. It's just a, a variable that we're using in place of a number. So we're going to put c and c at the front of each one of our parentheses because c times c gives us our c squared. And now remember that we're wanting two things to happen. We want to find a number that multiplies to a positive 30 and then in addition to that adds to a negative 13. Now if you'll remember in our last video we talked about the the way that the signs work together and because this guy is positive that means that my signs are going to be the same either both positive or both negative but then when I look at this guy because he is negative that means that both of my signs are going to be negative so in, this is your general he either tells you the signs are the same or they're different but the second guy here this addition is the one that actually tells you what the signs are so in this case we know that both signs are negative Okay, so now we're looking at 30, and we can start off with 30 times 1, and remember they're both going to be negative, but when we add that together, that's going to give us negative 31, so that's not going to work. Um, we have negative 2 and negative 15, but we add that, we're going to get negative 17, which also doesn't work. And we've got negative 3 and negative 10. Well, we add that, we get negative 13. That is what we were looking for for our center term. Remember, we wanted to add to negative 13. So there's our pair. And in our parentheses, we're going to put c minus 3 and c minus 10. And again, it really doesn't matter which one you put in with first, just as long as they're both in there. All right, so for our second example that we're going to do here, we're going to factor... a squared plus 15a plus 56. This is kind of one of our larger numbers that we've worked with so far, but um, we are going to figure it out. So again, we can start by doing our parentheses. We know we're going to lead off with a for both of those. Um, let's talk about what we're trying to look for here. So we want two numbers that multiply to a positive 56, and they also add to a positive 15. Again, remember these signs are telling us stuff. So since this is positive, we know that they're the same sign. We look to our addition to tell us what sign that is, and in this case it's positive. So we know that both signs are positive. All right, so let's look at this 56. It's kind of a big number, but we can do this. Uh, and again, remember, if you know the pair right off your head, off the top of your head, you don't have to write down the, the factors of it. You can just write down the answer. But sometimes um, if you don't know what it is, it's nice to write all the factors out and see which ones work or just start it somewhere. So I'm going to start with 1 and 56. Um, but that definitely didn't work because that is 57, which is way too big for what we want. We are only wanting 15 in our addition. So we've got 2 and 28. Again, that's too big because that's going to give us 30. We have 4 and 14, and that is going to give us 18, which again is too big. And the next thing up it, that divides evenly into 56 is 7, and we have 7 and 8. Oh, there it is. There's our 15 we were looking for was 7 times 8. By the way, guys, if you're unsure if something divides into 56, Take your calculator out and divide it. If you don't know whether or not 3 divides into 50, 56, check it and make sure it, if it does or doesn't. If it doesn't, then you can just ignore it and go on to the next number. Okay? So in here, we're going to have a plus 7 and a plus 8. So we get a plus 7 times a plus 8. All right. For our next example we got going on here, we're going to factor x squared plus 4x minus 5. 
So we're going to do our parentheses just like on our previous problems. We're going to lead off with that x on both of these guys. Again, we want to multiply to negative 5. And the second thing we want to do is add to a positive 4. Again, let's talk about our signs before we start looking at what um, numbers we're going to use. So remember that this is negative, and the only way to get a negative through multiplication is to do opposite signs. So automatically, we know we're going to have opposite signs. One negative, one positive. And then we look at our addition, and our addition will tell us that the sign of our larger number. So we know that the larger number is positive. Okay, so now we're going to start looking for our factors. Now, the really awesome thing about working with numbers like 5, it's a prime number, which means it's only divisible by 1 in itself, which means it only has one set of factors, and that is 1 times 5. Remember that our larger number is our positive, so we're going to have a positive 5 and a negative 1. That does indeed give us a positive 4. So here we would have x minus 1 and x plus 5. Let's do one more example um, for our factoring. So we have our fourth example here. We're going to factor x squared minus 3x minus 28. Again, starting off by creating our two parentheses, having them lead off with x. We want to multiply to a negative 28. We want to add to a negative 3. So again, let's talk about our sign. We'll put a little star here. So because this guy is negative and we're multiplying to a negative, that means that we are using opposite signs, one positive, one negative. Here, because we're adding to a negative number and we have those opposite signs, this means that our larger number is negative. Okay, so out of the two numbers we find to multiply together, our larger one is going to be our negative value. So we're going to start with our 28, and we could do 1 and 28. Remember, my larger number is my negative. When I add those, that gives me a negative 27. That's not going to work. Um, we can do 2 when you, it's 2 and 14. So 2 and 14, again, my larger number is my negative, but that's going to give me negative 12. That's a little better, a little smaller, but still not our negative 3 we want. The next number that divides into 28 would be 4, and it would be 4 and 7. Again, my larger number is my negative, so that would be a negative 7. And when I combine those, I would get negative 3. There's my pair I'm looking for. That's my set. So I'm going to do x plus 4, x minus 7. Guys, if you have any questions about any of these problems, please feel free to email me, um, or you can message me on Canvas.